Hi, I'm Jerry with PressureWasher.net. We're standing in front of a uh, complete trailer package from Northstar. I want to show you a number of things that um, we're going to do to upgrade this system, and we're going to talk about troubleshooting a system that's tank fed like this. Um, this machine has a direct drive, four gallon a minute pump off of a 20 horsepower engine. That's kind of an overkill engine for this little pump, but every pump that is direct driven needs to be tank fed properly. This pump is raised up off the floor by about uh, 18 inches, so it's not gonna suck water uphill very easily. We better make it as easy as possible. So there's a couple of things that we wanna do. We've got a one inch line here feeding this thing from the, from the, uh, from the pump, uh, but it's coming through steel fittings that are eventually gonna get rusty. So when somebody has a chance to uh, get rid of all this stuff that's gonna rust, these fittings should have been plastic or, uh, or brass. Now, uh, this also has a bypass line that's going back to the inlet side of the pump over here, so they've added a thermal relief valve. But wait, you're not supposed to do that on a tank fed system because these things suck air. So now we got a pump that's tank fed, sucking air, it's not gonna have much of a chance in life. So this has to come off and this bypass line needs to be back into the holding tank. Also, this has a easy start valve, which is cute and it is plumbed back to the tank by itself but this is your first suspect when something goes wrong with these things for pressure. This is the wimpiest component in the entire system. If we had just used an unloader that was a lower, uh, a, a reduced uh, bypass pressure unloader, it would have overcome that. To be able to start the engine at a, at, and not have it trying to create a, a bunch of back pressure is, uh, you know, you can, you can accommodate that with a uh, flow actuated unloader valve or there's a couple of other options. But using an easy start valve is to add the wimpiest component that's ever been used on a pressure washer. So it's your first suspect when they fail. We can leave this on as long as it's bypassed separately from the return line of the unloader, the bypass line. Um, that way you can look in the tank and see if it's bleeding or not. If it's bleeding when the gun is open, then of course you can just take this off and plug the hole and get back to work. You'll just have to hold the gun open when you're starting the system if you don't have but a pressure actuated unloader like this. So this machine needs uh, the bypass to go instead of back to the inlet side of the pump, it needs to go back to the holding tank and it needs to be a separate fitting from this, uh, from this um, uh, easy start valve. Also, one thing that we don't like on um, heated systems is using a pressure switch for turning on and off the heater. Okay, first of all, using a 15 amp rated pressure switch doesn't help anything to last a long time when the high voltage draws almost a 20 amp surge just to start every time you open the gun and it's supposed to turn on. So this pressure switch is going to die at 12 months old. Anytime they're ever used on a 12 volt burner system for turning on and off the high voltage with the fuel solenoid, it's a perpetuating mistake that most manufacturers use. It's a dumb mistake because the switch ain't even rated for, the, for that on the contacts because we need more than a 20 amp rated set of contacts to have any sort of reliability with our 12 volt burner. And oh yeah, not only does it kill the switch, but it also kills the igniter. So there's 100, uh, 190 to 250 bucks out the door plus labor and whatever your downtime is every 12 months like clockwork. You don't need that frustration. So this needs a relay on the heater circuit, circuit which is buried down here in the frame on this machine. but at least we can make it more reliable by adding a control relay with like 70 or 80 amp contacts. It's not rocket science. It's just making things more bulletproof by properly controlling the work environment, which these things have to go through. So anyway, so this ought to have a flow switch instead of a pressure switch, and that flow switch should be controlling a relay. Just saying. Moving right along, this has a downstream chemical injector on here at the outlet of the heater for the guy that wants to draw soap. Well, if you want to waste soap through a downstream chemical injector, 
um, when it should have been pre-sprayed uh, pre -sprayed to begin with. Well, that's that's fine, but don't leave it on because the thoroughfare on a downstream injector. Well, okay, I can see this one lives on here because nobody's taking it off and it's all corroded on there now. So we're gonna have to find a way to get this back off of here and train the user that it needs to not be on there because if you look down its throat, it's a little tiny flow restrictor to the performance of the system. We're already down to only four gallons a minute on this pump as it was originally designed. And then to put an additional flow restrictor on here, this guy's trying to clean sidewalks, I've heard, and sidewalks production style doesn't happen at four gallons a minute, let alone through a flow restrictor. This is a mistake, and it was a mistake in training. So we're going to bring this guy up to speed with understanding how to use and when to use a chemical injector, and we're going to bypass his unloader back to the holding tank so it's, number one, more reliable, and so it's easier to troubleshoot, and so we can eliminate the thermal relief valve so we're not sucking air in the pump, causing the pump to, be, to go bad prematurely. And by the way, any air bubbles or that type of cavitation on a direct drive pump, it shatters the hell out of the shafts because it's just metal on metal in there. If you want your machine to have a chance to live a long time, this is not the combination that you need. If you've stuck with this combination, you need to do these upgrades or just call PressureWasher.net and get it done right the first time.